Hello all, in a previous video we understood how to execute and record test cases with the help of UFT. Now in this video we are going to explore more features of UFT. So guys this was the recording we had in our last video. We recorded sample flight application and we enter username as John, password as HP and clicked on OK button and it got recorded in this view. Good thing about UFT is it will give you screenshot of your recording also. So when this step is recorded, you can see in this view over here. Whenever you are recording, screenshots of that recording is also attached, which is very important for a tester. Because as a tester, it's very important for us to attach the screenshot of our execution. If something happened, any error came, like we can easily explain with the help of screenshots. So UFT is making our job very easy because it is providing you snapshots along with the recording. Now, if let's say you are manual tester and you just switch to automation testing, UFT is the best option because UFT is giving you all the features of programming as well as user interface if you are not good in programming. So for example, right now if you see this first step over here, if I click on this, it's going to highlight this particular tab. That means this is this object. Guys, any button, edit box, radio button, combo box, um, buttons, these all elements of an application is called objects of an application. So you can call it either objects or elements. So this is one object. This is another object. This is third. This is fourth. So there are four objects which we are testing over the application. This first object is called edit box because you can edit over here. You can type, you can change value if you have written something. Even in the password, it is edit box. You can type, you can change. So this is edit box. This is button which is clickable. So if I click on the second line over here, it's going to highlight this edit box. If I'll click on this third, it's going to highlight this button. So this is how you can identify which object you have recorded over here. We call it as script view, expert view or editor view. That means here programmer or here tester can write down the scripts. If tester is good in programming, he can write down the scripts over here. This is the platform. If you think you want to change the value passed over here, you can go ahead and change value here. Let's say you have written John. Now I want to write, um, let's say Sam. I can write it down over here. If I want to test the negative test case, I can pass negative data over here. But right now I know the positive data is John. So I'm going to write John again. So this is how editor view looks like. But let's say I'm not comfortable with the editor view. I want to see user interface. As a manual tester, I'm not comfortable in scripting. Then UFT took care of that too. UFT has provided you something called keyword view. If you go to this view option over here, you will see keyword view option. So let's click on it and look at this. You are getting this particular option as keyword view. That means it is more easy to understand. The user interface is very easy to understand. Micro focus, my flight is my parent application under which I have the child elements or objects that is agent name if you see this pencil sign over here that means it is an edit box this is button so this is how you can see which item it is what operation is being performed on it on agent name we are setting name as john this is your test data which you can change for testing purpose this is your password which is in secure format click because I'm not passing any input data over here. So nothing is appearing. And these are the actions we performed. This is for the documentation. Enter John in agent name, edit box, enter the encrypted password in password. So this is how you can get steps of test execution. So let's say I want to create test cases. I can copy this over here and enter the steps in my test case documentation. So UFT provides you all the features to make your job very easy. Now, if I again want to switch into editor view, again, you will go to view and here you will see editor option. You can click on that and you can see the editor view over here. If you want to open some any window which is missing, let's say by mistake, I close the solution explorer window. Very easy. You can go to view option again 
and now you can click on solution explorer you can see it will appear so this is how you can navigate from keyword view to editor view now let's understand editor view in little more detail so guys this here wpf window this is the type of object so if you look at this window over here this is WPF window, which is Microfocus My Flight Sample application. See here, name is appearing Microfocus My Flight Sample. So this is your main window, and you know how it is identifying this object. If you remember, at the time of installation, we installed .NET dependencies, and this application is built in .NET, and this is how it is identifying the object clearly. And at the time when we were initializing UFT, we were opening UFT, add-in manager opened and in add-in manager, we checked the option of .NET and this is how it is identifying properties of this object. So this is WPF window, that means Windows Presentation Foundation window, that means it is window based application and name of the application is this and now WPF which is Windows Presentation Foundation and this is an added box type of object. And this is name of object. After that, you will write dot action we took on it. So parent application, which is my flight sample dot child objects property dot action we are taking on it. So we are going to my flight in my flight. We are going to child object. So that's why name of the flight name of the parent application dot address of child object that is this object here so it is definitely edit box it is window based so wpf edit name of this particular object is agent name so name dot whatever action we want to take on it it's very easy to understand programming in uft because it is always properties of parent application dot child object dot action so if we see here now i want to enter password so first parent dot child which is added box and the name of box is password dot action same parent dot child which is button and name of the button is okay and dot action which is click so guys this is how we can manipulate and read data recorded in scripting and if you're not comfortable in scripting, you're manual tester, you just switched into automation, you have very good option of keyword view. That's all for this video. In our next video, we're going to understand where UFT store all the recordings and which one is considered as the brain of UFT. Thank you for now.